right, good morning Matrix Canada. Uh, how you doing? It is just Pam Walmsley here uh, to do a discussion all about reds. So obviously I like reds, we talk a lot about reds, and what I wanna talk about today is mostly uh, like tips and tricks and talk about challenges that we often see achieving red. So I hope that's okay with you guys. If you have any questions, as always, drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to read them so I can get everything answered that you would like. I really hope that everyone is still staying safe. Everyone is uh, self-isolating and all that stuff. And I hope that, again, everyone is safe and I thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in with us every single day to watch our videos. I hope you're enjoying them. I'm hoping it's giving you something to do um, in this isolation and I hope uh, we're just gonna be going back to work absolutely uh, stronger. You've seen the matrix hashtag stronger together. So we really are trying to help the community uh, stay sane and give you guys some information. So good morning, everyone. Good morning, Leanne. Thank you guys again for joining. So like I said, today's conversation is about reds. So please drop your questions and comments um, and your concerns about reds in the comments and I'll make sure I get everything answered. So at Matrix, we have a lot of options for reds. We are known for our reds, and it is something that I feel like Matrix does really, really well. It's actually what first brought me over to the line years ago. I've been using Matrix now for about nine years and been a redhead pretty much the entire time. And it was, again, the reason I switched to Matrix was because of the reds. So just to remind, our natural levels and on the back of our level has your uh, natural underlying pigment. We know that the darker you are, the more red and the more deeper that red is naturally occurring. And then the lighter someone goes, it goes from a red to a red orange, into an orange, into a gold, into a pale yellow. Okay, oh, good morning, Emily. Hope you and the baby are well. <laughs> and so in order to get the best red. So not only the best red, I want to talk the longest lasting red. And I know what does everyone always say about reds is they fade. They don't last or reds go warm. Okay. First of all, red is a warm tone, but they, it's the brassiness. It's the orangeness that comes out that people don't like. So if we look at our underlying pigment, where reds will live best, is where a red is supported. It's one of the reasons why my red doesn't tend to fade is because I keep my red where it is supported. So for me, I'm a natural level three. My underlying pigment naturally is already quite warm and I only lift myself up to a five, which has the underlying pigment of a red orange. So yes, my red will start to kind of warm out. I'll lose my red violet this and become, by the time I go to do my color, because I'm lazy, a little bit more red orange, especially in the bottom where, you know, sun and all that have lightened me higher than a five. But when I first do it, I'm here and I'm very supported. If you try to do a red up here, okay, the underlying pigment is yellow. Will your red violet be a true red violet for very long? The answer is no because your red violet plus, sorry here, yellow, the violet and the yellow will, after a couple of times of fading, will start to uh, neutralize each other. Now you're left with a red sitting at a yellow, so it's going to go orange, okay? It's, it's basic color wheel theory, and that's why when you try to do a beautiful red at a level seven, and this is what you're applying it onto, that is why your reds will always go brassy, will always warm out, will always be like, well, I put on red and it went copper, is you really have to think of this. Your end result of color is always, always, what is in the bowl plus what the hair contributes. Oh, hey, Pauline and hey, Taylor um, and Emily, uh, thank you. Um, we're doing good too, even though I wanna strangle everyone I live with, but that's great. <laughs> Thank you guys for asking. So just think of that. What is in the tube 
So no matter what you're applying, and this doesn't just, it's everybody. It doesn't matter what you eat for breakfast. It doesn't matter your nationality. It doesn't matter your ethnicity. Everybody contributes warmth. So think of what's in the tube plus what the hair contributes is what your end result is. Okay? So if I'm putting on, like I said, a red violet here, your end result will be red violet plus orange. Okay? If I'm putting red red on up here, I'm doing red red plus yellow. Okay? So I'm going to end up more red copper. Okay? I hope that part makes sense. Now, if I want a true red violet up in here, okay, you, you have to fill. You've got to make sure the hair has enough anchors. So that when the red goes on here, it has something to make out with and it wants to hang around. If it goes in and has no anchors and no friends, it's going to leave the party really, really quickly and really soon. And that's where people will say reds don't last. Okay? So in the world of matrix, we have a couple, oh, hey Martin. Okay? We have a couple of options for reds. And what I'm gonna to talk to you guys more about is our more fashion reds. So of course we have our red browns, our brown reds, our mochas, even golds and warms could be considered part of the red family. They all have a blended brown base. So they're great, but when you're talking reds, to me, I'm talking these reds, okay? So these are the Reflect Collection, and all of these uh, tubes come in a box with an orange swirl on the top. So even right from the beginning, you pull these ones out and with that orange swirl in your swatch book, they're under the orange banners, the pages themselves are red. These have no brown base in them. So you will not brown out because there's no brown in the shade. Okay? And these shades here are the red reds, the red violets, and the violet reds, okay? which this is kind of my favorite one, the six RV, but I make myself about a five RV. You've then got your double coppers, and then you've got your red coppers. So again, no brown in titty, so you're going to get a pure reflection of tone. Do they offer gray coverage? The answer is no. There's no brown, there's no base, there's no neutral in these. When they hit the white hair, you'll see the tonality more. Your red violet will go kind of pinky, your reds will look a little hollow because there's nothing in there for that white hair. But that's where you add some neutral, you add gold, you add warm, you add something with the brown base in the percentage of gray that you have to get coverage. Personally, I like the brighter reflex I get. I'm actually quite gray, especially through the sides. So I like the highlights that I get, but that's me. Most clients don't want that. So add a little bit of neutral um, to be able to get that gray coverage. The other, ooh, I'm sorry, I just banged you guys. The other reds that we do have are into our fashion lines, which is our high definition reds. These ones here, come in, I'm sorry, these are old packaging guys, but I have, uh, they're in the black box with the red tab. And these are your high definition shades. They come in a uh, copper red, a red red, as well as a red violet. And what these ones do, and they're a bit weird because there's no level, okay? They are just pure toned reds that are designed to work with your underlying pigments, okay? So just think of adding a pure red, red tone on here. What did we talk about? This will go red, red plus copper. So your red, red, your HDRR is going to look more HDCR because that's what level you've put it on for support. Okay? So, and I hear it all the time, HDRR is too warm. Remember what you're putting it on. If you want your HDRR, sorry, left down. RR to be cooler, it has to be applied on the darker levels where that coolness will be supported. And also if you want a cool red, add some RV into it. You could mix all the HDs with each other. So you could do half RR and half RV where that violet will help keep you cool even if you're trying to pump up the levels, which is what I do bringing myself up to a five to keep my red on the violet -y side. HD, so HDRV, let me get my tongue around it, 
works best down here. Back, because that's where the red vial is the best supported. And then you've kind of got your HDRR, and then your HDCR is kind of from here up. It's a bit more forgiving. But just know if you put HDCR, the copper red, on down here, it's going to look more RR because you have a lot of red influencing it. So instead of CR, it might uh, RC on you, okay? The HD series works with all volumes of developer. So 10, 20, 30, 40. Just again, always remember what level you're starting with um, going up. So here, I'm gonna do this this way. So like I said, I'm a natural level three. And with 20 volume, I'd come a five. I'd be a five RR, five CR, whatever it is. If I did 30 volume, I'd come up to a six, 40 volume. But also remember, that's what underlying pigment you'd be going to. Uh, Pauline's asking a really great question. Could you add a bit of blue so boost um, to cool it like a chocolate chip size? Definitely, definitely, definitely. You can add a little bit of this, okay? And like a chocolate chip, a chip it into your HDs or into any of your reds to be able to keep it cool, okay? Remember that red and blue make violet. So when you're wanting your RV to really embrace the violet side of it, add some of that blue uh, pigment in there um, to keep it down on those levels. With the so boost, so there is a couple of them. Thank you, Pauline, for asking that question. You've got four options, okay? So can you add the red to boost the red of anything? Definitely, go for it. You can add the copper to boost your copperness. I don't think copperness is a word, but it is now. <laughs> and then you've got your blue, which is designed for into your like ash shades, into your warm shades to keep yourself um, on the cooler side. So you can turn like a 5A into a 5AA. But in your reds, it helps keep you cool. It helps keep this kind of like under your thumb so it doesn't expose quite as much. The rule of thumb with the boosters is you can go up to a quarter or 25% of your formula into your boosters without disrupting your level, okay? Because these have no level. I just always tell people to watch with the blue because it is quite strong, that if you actually added a quarter of your formula and because ash shades appear much darker to the eye, it will drop you much faster than the other ones will lift, uh, dilute your level upwards. Okay, so start really with blue, start with chocolate chips, okay? Before you start cranking too much of it into your formula. Cool, so thank you, Pauline, for asking that. If I go on to the next one, so sorry, that was the end of the HDs. If I go on to the next ones, these ones here are your so reds. So you've got a so red, uh, red violet, a so red red, and a so red red copper. These ones here are in red boxes, sorry, put them the right way, red boxes, and again, a red tab. And these ones here are, they've been around for a long time. They have two purposes. So one uh, purpose is to add into any other so color as a booster. So you want to add a bit more red, kind of like we just talked about with so boost. You can do that into there to boost your red. The other way of doing it is on its own with a developer to get a, like a bright red highlight into the hair. What so reds do, which are very unique, is they will slightly lighten through pre-existing color. And I'm going to say slightly lift through because I want to manage your expectations of the tube. What I see a lot of people do is their client is here and they want bright red highlights or bright red hair and they want to put so red red all over it and think they're going to end up like the swatch. Remember, what's in the tube plus what the hair contributes is your end result. So if my hair is contributing this, I'm not going to get this, oops, sorry, this out of it. It's going to be a combination of the two. So I'm going to probably get more like a, a four RV the first time, unless I cleanse that black or dark pigment off. But it is a great way to do a red highlight on somebody without doing the pre-lightening. Okay. Uh, Tiffany, if you're lifting to a level, lifting to a level 710, can you neutralize the base to get a true red color? if that makes sense. 
no, it doesn't make sense. Um, I, what I think you're trying to ask me if I'm lifting up into these darker levels, sorry, lighter levels. I obviously need more coffee this morning. If I'm lifting up in here, can I neutralize the base for a true red? So here's the thing. I don't want to neutralize it. I don't want to neutralize this yellow because I'm going to then create brown. I'm going to create a neutral and I want a bright red. What you be, if you're lifting up into here, make this work for you, okay? Or adjust your formula um, to be able to support it. So if you're lifting up here, I'm, I'm gonna say, uh, let's hypothetically say it's corrective. I'm correctively removing some brown off of the hair. I've now exposed this and she wants to be a level five red. I would either work with this, um, but she wants to be down in here. She wants to be like a five RR. Because I'm dropping more than uh, two levels, I would fill. So I would do like a six copper gold in color sync rinse that off and then put my 5RR on. I could try putting my 5RR on here, but if you think of, if she was already a blonde and I want it to be a five, I would fill. So it's no different if you're wanting to drop your level with a red. So just kind of watch that. If you're trying to be a level 10 red, that is where the red might not stick. Because again, like I said, there's no one to make out with at the party. So the red's gonna come in hang out for a little bit and then want to leave and it will leave on the orangey side even though it came in on the cool red side. Okay, I hope Tiffany that I answered your question or that I'm reading your question correctly. Okay. When you're trying to go uh, darker with reds, I really, 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 really do not suggest these shades. I do not suggest doing something that doesn't have a level. The so reds are designed to lift they're a high lift red shade. So to try to go darker with these, it doesn't work. To try to go darker with a, a high definition, an HD shade, again, it's not gonna work because there's no level attached to it. I get asked a lot, why do we even have HD shades? Because we have a 5RR, a 6RV, and we have those. Oh, I did. Thank you, Tiffany, for clarifying that. Good, because I was wondering. <laughs> um, the high definition shades compared to a uh, five, so I'm sorry, I can do this. Compared to like an RR shade. You guys might not remember this, but if you remember scrolling through a television um, and you would have like regular cable and then you would flip to a high definition channel. So you can think of walking through Best Buy and you see all the different channels and some of them are like, you can tell how often I shop for televisions. Some of them are like the high definition. Some of them are the uh, LED, LED and that, and you can see the picture quality between them, but they're all showing the same blue sky, the same green grass. It's kind of the difference between a predetermined with an anchor level, like five red, to a high definition red. It's the same red, just reflecting much differently, much like when you scroll through the channels of a television. Okay, make sense, everyone? You don't realize how much I look forward to these when I'm teaching as to when I'm not getting them. Um, so when you're going to refresh a red, oh, thank you, whoever just gave me the, the thumbs up. When you're going to refresh a red, this is where, I don't wanna say that people go wrong or people miss stuff. I just think it's when I'm teaching and I'm speaking to somebody and they're telling me that they're getting hot roots, they're getting brown out, uh, they don't understand why they got a beautiful red here and this is brown. So that's kind of what I want to talk to you guys about at this point. When you're refreshing a red, and it doesn't matter what it is, if it's red, brown, if it's mocha, if it's red, what I want you to think of on the ends is what does the hair actually need, okay? So if you think of when we do color, it's what fades first. It's always the red, it's always the warm tone. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, one of the biggest thing with reds, and I see it on every forum that I'm on, is people talking about hot roots. Hot roots come from when we're not accurately determining a few things, the natural level or the amount of red that's already on the hair. So remember, uh, we, talked, we talked in a couple of the videos about natural levels. If I'm guessing someone to be, let's say a five, 
but in actuality, there are four. Okay, and then what's on the ends, I'm guessing is maybe let's say a six, but they're actually a five. And, but I formulate everything with the wrong levels. That's when this becomes a bit hot. Okay, or then I'm gonna put, let's say six RR on here, but this is six red brown. Okay, so that brown is gonna be there, but there's no brown being applied here. This gets hot. And that's when you kind of get that little bit of a glow. The other way we get hot roots is not um, compensating for gray. Oh, hey Lynn, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, it's gray. So if someone is quite gray here, let's just say they're, they're 50% and I put on six RR. Those white hairs are gonna be like, ooh, -hoo, hello. And, but this has all been covered. This is now gonna look hot, it's gonna look hollow, and you're gonna wonder where, what happened. That's when you need to really assess what's on the hair, not only here, but also what's here. Remember, color doesn't lift color. So if you're trying to make, you want this to be lighter, brighter, or redder, it's a corrective service. And it's usually something that doesn't take all day. It's a quick shampoo, cocktail, bleach, bath, eraser, whatever you want to call it, to just buff off that brown because you just want to, it's in my hand, you just want to expose this. I don't, because just think, if she's a five red brown, hypothetically, but now she wants to be five red red, I don't need to lift her to here. All I want to do is buff the brown off, expose this, so now she can be a red. If I've gone and done this, I now need to fill to bring her back down here to make her a 5RR. Okay, I'm picturing you all nodding. Perfect. Okay, so that's with hot roots. The other one is brownout, and I, this is what I see a lot. I had some, oh, just knocked everything over. This is what I had someone do for me ages ago, and it stuck with me. So let me just center you guys. If I see if I can do this without knocking you over. And apparently this shows up backwards to you guys, so I hope that you can still follow along even if it's backwards, because I don't know how to write backwards, okay? So if I apply a red brown onto the hair, okay? It's our formula. What is going to fade first off of the hair? It's never the brown, it's always the red, okay? So now we've left with brown hair. And what we always do is we apply red brown again. What fades first? The red. So what do we apply? So now we've got so much brown down here and we've lost all the red. So what I always ask people is that if you're doing red-brown on the regrowth, do you need brown down here? And the answer usually is no. What you need on the ends is just red. So refresh your ends with just red, what is being faded off of the hair. Just put red on. And we have so many options. You could do uh, 5RR, 6RR, uh, you could do uh, HDRR, you could just put a, a semi-permanent cult shade on the end, you could do cult red hot semi on the ends, demi. You've got so many options instead of just taking what is here and bringing it through, okay? That is how you get brown out, okay? When you want that bright, vibrant red, you don't want the brown, so don't keep adding it onto the hair, okay? I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense even though it's backwards. Um, in Color Sync, there is the HD series. So this is what I use probably most, most of the time to refresh my red browns, my brown reds, to be able to keep that red tonality. I might not do it every single time, but it's definitely when they want that red reflection, I'll go to this because remember this over brown, the brown is still gonna be there and I'm just adding the red that has gone missing. With the Color Sync HD shades, what these do, no level, they will add your red, 
your red violet or your copper red at the level you're at. So if you are a level eight and do RR, you'll be an eight RR. If you're a five, you'll be a five RR. That's the idea behind these. So with 10 volume is what we recommend for these. And what I want you to just be aware of is if you are multi-leveled, okay? So let's say you're banded, there's some weird correction stuff going on there, home jobs, whatever. This might not be the tool that you want to use because you will keep all of those bands. If you want it to be all one, you need something with an anchor, you need that level. So you need to then reach for a five RR, okay? You can always glaze, top coat, uh, double dip your red with this afterwards, but for that first um, application, use something with a level, reach for that five or seven RR to be able to bring it all or do like, if you're filling, do like a six CG, six copper gold, and then apply this once your level is all good. In saying that, if you want that to keep that dimension, because you've done a balayage, you've done a lightning service, some kind of technique into the hair, and you're afraid that if you put a five RR on, it's all gonna disappear, that's where these are awesome, because it'll keep that high, low, that multi-dimensional look with this too, making everything a red red at the levels you've lightened to. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. It can either work really well for you or leave you with a head scratch. I'm not quite sure what happened. Okay. Oh, and I do have the so boost here as well. The so boost look like this. I did grab the red. And remember that so boost works with so color and color sync. So if you had a color sync shade, you could use the so boost with it, or you can use it with a so color shade. And again, the mixing ratio would stay the same of 25% of your formula. Okay. What I also want people to, uh, to think about is refreshing your uh, reds or coppers. Everything I've said about reds can be applied to coppers with your um, semi-permanent shade with cult. Give me one sec. They're just out of my reach. Is, and I do this very often with my own hair, is I will refresh my ends with red hot. It won't make my hair this color because I'm at a level five, but it will give me the brightest red that I could possibly get at this level. And when the sun shines off it, it's like stoplight red. And I will use sometimes the flamenco fuchsia as well. When I wanna keep it on the cool side, I just won't do this every single time because um, my kids tell me I look too pink. Um, and sometimes I mix the two, kind of depends what I have. And then we have the new uh, Ricky Zito shade as well, which is ruby red, which is actually uh, has become my favorite for my color of red. Okay, so think of using these as well to refresh. They come in a, a semi and a demi, so whichever one you're more comfortable using, you can use those as well, no matter what you're using here from Sew Color or Sync to be able to refresh, just to give a different option. Okay, I have a question here from Tara. I have a client that is 50% gray. She likes to be a 6RR. I'm still struggling with finding a root formula. Do the uh, 500 red series cover well? Also, every time she comes for her six week refresh, I usually use the Demi Cult Red on her ends while her root color is on. Good idea. Okay, sorry, I, I read that kind of half to myself. <laughs> um, so she has a client that is 50% gray and she likes to be a 6RR. She's struggling with finding a root formula. So what she can use is there is a 500 red series. There's 500 reds and 500 coppers. So either one of them will give you really great coverage, but there's a lot of neutral and there's a lot of brown in them. So she likes the vibrancy of a 6RR. She might be slightly disappointed that her regrowth is a little bit deeper. It'll still be a red. It just, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a flashy red. It's not going to be. Um, I know this isn't 5RR, but 5RR is out of my reach right now because I dropped them on the floor. Um, it won't be this vibrant. It'll be a bit deeper. What I would do is exactly what you have been doing is I would mix my formula here. I would do uh, three parts, uh, 500R 
to one part 6RR and that will give her the best coverage but then refresh the ends with something that has no brown. So like uh, you had said, you're using the uh, Demi Cult Red on her, that is your best option. You could use the HD for it as well uh, or Cult. If she really wants a pop every once in a while, do a semi over the Demi just to get that brightness for when the light shines off of it. But doing exactly what you're doing is perfect. I would just add some of your 500 series into here. And again, there's a 500 red and a 500 copper uh, to do that with. We usually say you can go half and half, half 500 series, half so color shade for coverage. But I just want you to think of one thing when we're talking about the reds, coppers, or reflect collection is, do you remember what I said at the very beginning? These shades have no brown. They have no neutral. They have nothing in them to help you with coverage. So all the other so color shades do, they have a percentage of neutral in them that helps with coverage on their own. These shades have nothing in them. So that's why I will personally say only one quarter of your formula. You can go more. I see it all the time that people go half and half. You just might sacrifice a little bit of coverage when you're adding something in that has no neutral. Okay, so it's the same with if you're, I see people trying to do 500 series and HDs same idea it has nothing in there to help you with coverage so if you went equal parts you might find a bit of translucency for some people this is the best thing ever because they um they'll get like a natural highlight and they'll use that translucency for brightness to get that vibrancy someone like me but just know that if you do that that could be what will happen if your client is okay with it go for it if they want full coverage, do the three parts to one part. Okay, and again with 20 volume. Cool, so I hope, Tara, I hope that uh, helps you out with your question. You're doing an amazing job with your formula. And that's pretty much all I have for you guys today on reds. Uh, just for a quick recap, or I've dropped all my swatches on the floor. If anyone's ever worked beside me, you know that this is actually what I do. I drop everything all day long. <laughs> um, my biggest thing that I want you guys to take away from our session today is that to get a good red, it needs to be supported in the level that you're applying it on. Good. Thanks, Tara. Um, it's this. It's, I've said it before, this page in your swatch book should be the most used. So just think if your client, where they're going to lift them to, what is the underlying pigment that is there and is it going to support the red shade that she's wanting? Okay. We could briefly talk about home care and I will admit I am a horrible redhead. I like hot showers. I heat style my hair every day. I don't wear a hat when I go outside. That's just me, but I'm okay with my, um, the evolution of my red only for the reason that I can just quickly retone it myself. If your client wants to be a redhead, especially in their first couple of applications before you've kind of like built the shade up in her hair, she really needs to be using a color safe shampoo, okay? Not a volumizing, uh, not a clarifying, she needs to be using something color safe. Um, I, Biolage Color Last, Total Results Color Obsessed, or uh, Total Results Keep Me Vivid, or Biolage Raw Color Care are going to be your best choices for this client. And it does have to be something that you talk to her about. If she's continuing to use something that is not designed to protect her color, her color is just gonna leave her that much faster, especially with reds, knowing how snobby they are. Even if you followed these steps, she needs to be doing something to help you. You're only with her for two hours. What is she doing for six weeks to make these two hours last her as long as possible? Okay, that's how I approach it with my clients. You can do things like tinting her conditioner for her making color bombs and all that kind of stuff. And we are gonna have a class on color bombs. Uh, I forget the date, but it's into April um, to show you actually how to do these tinted conditioners to help up your retail and your salon and help your clients keep their colors completely um, fresh um, between services, so be before this comes in. Okay, so I hope this helped you guys. I really hope you got something out of it. Um, I'm seeing a bunch of great class, great, great class, great class. So I really hope you guys found this awesome. 
If any other questions do come up, as always, drop them in the comments below. I will definitely come back and answer all of your questions. Um, it was nice to see you guys all. And until next time, uh, have a great day, guys. Uh, stay safe. And I hope you're all doing well. See you guys later. Bye, guys.